Welcome to another episode of the Connecticut Creative Collaborative. I'm Marianne Cruz, business strategist and coach and co-founder of C3 Collaborative. And I'm John Jermillo, leadership coach and founder of CoachItOut.com. And this series that um, Marianne and I put together uh, has to do with creatives, everything creatives, not just the traditional creatives you may think of as authors, painters, sculptors, etc., but any kind of creativity that plays out in the many industries, the many specialists and the people in our network. So that's why we put this together, which try to pick people's brains about their past, what's led them into what they're doing today, and then what they want to, what they want to play out for their future in their business, in their organization, uh, into the future. So today we are interviewing Candice Friedenberg, founder of Untapped Potential. And um, I, just want to hop right into it and let's get started. So Candace, welcome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So Candace, for those who don't know you or the nature um, or know, you know, the nature of your work, can you describe to us all what you do? What I do? Yes, I can. Thank you. Well, Untap Potential is a social enter enterprise, a benefit corp, and we um, really are creating workplace change for women uh, that opted out of the workforce. And we're um, valuing that um, role that they've had as a parent, a primary parent in their children's lives. And we're uh, capturing, ready that, readying them for today's technologies and then launching them mm -hmm. in mid-career conditions, mid-career positions so that they can, you know, fly back to their potential. So Candice, can you give a couple examples of what the organization does, what kind of events it puts together for that, for that market that you're trying to help get back into the workforce? Uh, yes, definitely. We, we certainly um, are an event-driven business, and now that's a bit virtual, um, but we have always had informational sessions, mentor mingles, and we really provide this network of support that women might not have had during their caregiving years that integrates them to professionals in the marketplace. So we um, request industry mentors, simply women or men, like John has participated in some of our events, um, that are in industry to be um, their network. And so we do uh, mentor mingles, we also do mock interviews. And then uh, as we curate uh, real roles in corporate America that are, that are at that mid-grade level, but offer some mm -hmm. flexibility, we hold interview events. So in addition to the event-driven side that offers that network of support with coaches, mentors, and peers who can support each other, um, we also have a Skill Up program. So our Skill Up program offers um, the right course at the right time for a candidate, depending on where they've been and where they want to get to. And we also uh, curate those courses and deliver the courses that are what our clients are telling us are the skill sets of the future. Okay. And before we started recording, we had talked about how um, innovation versus creativity, there's a mix they can cross. Mm -hmm. How have you seen, based on maybe people that have done it before you are in that same kind of space, space. How have you, how do you use creativity in, in that space? Um, how have you reached out to the community? How have you reached out to the markets? What is it that has really kicked up your need to kind of innovate how you approach the people that both need that guidance and assistance and, and for other people to put that word out there for what it is you're trying to do? Yeah. Um, I, I'm honored to be at this, um, session with the topic of creativity. And I looked at um, not only what, you know, this aha moment of this is human capital that's not being put to good use. This is human capital that was on the glide path to become senior management or directors in their, their particular skill set, and yet they opted out for 2.7 years, three to five years, five to 10 years, and there's no clean path for them to get back in. And in fact, the barriers have only grown with the job board systems, the, uh, the AI that's being used, the keyword search. They don't have those words. They're not going to be on the resume and they're not going to lie and say they are. So what we really had to think of um, how to change that um, normal process for 
people can get hiring people and people getting back to work. And where we've been innovative is, first of all, we had the great opportunity to participate in Hartford's uh, award-winning incubator and uh, reset offers the impact accelerator in in that they really encouraged you to to not come with the idea of what is the solution but go to the market and in our case it's a two-sided market the clients and the and the, the women that are at home but educated professionals and ask a lot of questions inquiry based and through those questions we really identified not only what were the barriers, but also what were the biases on the client side, and also what was holding women back. And really what we found was, um, you know, them not having a network was one of the barriers, and also their lack of confidence. So our program creeps them up in that confidence stair where our first sessions are at libraries, where they're already at with their, you know, three, five, seven year old. And then we bring it into people's homes. Many um, mentors and candidates, candidates that have launched graciously host kind of a ladies night out. And then we bring it into corporate settings, whether it was the mock interview at City Place that you attended or our um, speed interviews that are at kind of those new wave um, co-working spaces where we can have that private setting for multiple managers to interview our candidates. And I know you have a varied background, um, MBA and engineer. Can you Kind of give us a walkthrough of what it is that led you to this place. You just mentioned a couple of minutes ago an aha moment. So if you could, what built up to where you are now? And what was that aha moment that actually set untapped potential down this path? Uh, definitely. I actually, um, my career in engineering, um, I'm an optical engineer, which is pretty rare. There's only two schools that do deliver an undergraduate degree. I further went on to get a manufacturing systems master's and then also a master's of science in business. And um, as I was, you know, definitely innovative in my engineering role, having patents and being at the forefront of many laser uh, material processing technologies. I was involved in LASIK surgery and um, multi-layer thin film uh, ablation and things in the semiconductor space, which was 20 years ahead of its time when I was at IBM and they were a Fortune 6 company. So I was definitely doing innovative things and creativity, not artistic, but creativity was in there. But where I ended up being more creative was really those um, seeing potential markets. So um, I launched new businesses within IBM. Uh, our uh, optical design services, we took public and selling outside of IBM's manufacturing, but to uh, medical industries, uh, army, uh, different uh, military contracts, and, and even like Schick razors and all different commercial applications. And um, two of us started it and it grew. And that's kind of when I got this bug of kind of managerial, getting my MBA, things of that nature. And then we launched another uh, capital equipment, you know, 100K equipment, and we did it with a partnership. And I made that partnership between the largest laser manufacturer and IBM. So I was negotiating between two international companies and both being breast of breed in their field. And um, I went into worldwide sales and then pivoted to Eastman Kodak. And really there, my innovation was more people oriented, how to bring silos of um, optics, mechanics, and electronics engineers that have been worked, working for hundreds of years in silos, but to deliver small, compact commercial products competing with the ELF camera. How do we bring them together? How do we set up the workspace? How do we innovate how they communicate and work and streamline their fear-driven or kind of um, check-in-the-box protectionary space-driven documents and bring them together in so they can work more quickly. And um, my aha moment was more um, based on uh, two things I'll say, and, and both will be kind of unique. One was um, in my Master's of Science and Business, our economics uh, professor always had us thinking of as an economist, how does this piece in the news impact things? As an economist, how would you... Um, look at what FedEx is doing in the marketplace and just different things. And I was at a women's, um, you know, ladies night out similar uh, to the events that we run. And it was, um, we broke up in different groups and it was, how are we going to be our own visionary in 2015, kicking off 2015. And simply the aha moment was the women that I met were 
Cornell PhDs, Duke graduates that were in marketing space and uh, didn't have digital marketing skills, but they all were at home and some were actually in the workplace and struggling with, I'm missing out on my family. I have to be out of pocket for four months a year and I don't want to give up this major client, but I'm missing my children's you know, high school years and I only have three more years with them. I want to opt out. So there was both sides of the equation and, and what I aha moment was, A, this is untapped human capital that, that's from an economist standpoint going to waste and sidelined for the remainder of their 30 years left to go in their career. The other um, point on that you know, human capital is that the workforce is still in the industrial age of nine to five and following the information age, they didn't get rid of the rules of nine to five, they just added to it. In other words, the ubiquitous access of internet and access to your technologies and your tools didn't make it you can work anywhere their way that therefore women could participate. It was you can work anywhere. So your, you know, breadwinning spouse can work 11 out of the 16 hours a day. So um, our industrial age workforce was not um, appealing or attractive to educated professional women that were missing out on their childhood, yet they could do anything and add their skill in a flexible way. So that's kind of our goal. The other thing is um, I actually had, uh, one thing I wanna stay on that is COVID-19 might be putting the little things more back in perspective, especially with men working at home now. Um, due to the shutdown of government driven shutdown. Um, but I actually, um, and I haven't shared this a lot, but I actually had pioneered telecommuting in 1994 at IBM. And it wasn't that I needed to opt out because I had kids at home. It was that my husband was in the Marine Corps. He had been gone on an, on different floats. And I basically said, I could keep doing the lens design, the engineering, what I'm doing and meet your program of four hours a week. You had to come in four hours a week. They had great workplace programs, but I would be in North Carolina where he is for these 10 months while he's home. We had been married for two years, but hadn't been together. And they said, um, we don't want you coming back four hours a week. That would be just too risky because at that time they only had two optical engineers and they even sent us on different airplanes when we were going to the same convention wow. to make sure <laughs> they didn't lose us. So I was fortunate in that they uh, let me interview a technician to become my hands in the lab. And I worked 10 months telecommuting in the time frame of Prodigy and You've Got Mail. IBM had the internet with a 4,800 baud modem, I could communicate with Japan, France, Germany within 30 seconds. So I successfully knew telecommuting could work. Um, and um, one of my master's papers was the prescription for success for teams and management for telecommuting. Um, but uh, more what drove me to the solution for untapped potential. And I wasn't at that time even considering going back to work. I was a stay at home mom with three kids and was pretty engaged as a parent and felt like my work was valued. It was valued. I don't know if the workplace was valuing it, but um, the uh, thing is when my husband was in the Marine Corps, uh, he had gotten his MBA and he had launched in corporate America through this program that the military had that um, sought out uh, mid-grade junior officers and mm -hmm. matched them with mid-level management roles. And so that company that came and held an event th six days a year, um, so I'm kind of mimicking what I saw there in that that company would launch junior military officers in corporate America and they'd come back to the same resource pool because they knew how they were trained, they valued them, and they knew the rigor that interview process that this company went through to select the right military officers for the corporate America jobs. So my goal is for untapped potential to build that same credibility with the rigor of our interview process, the rigor of our um, preparing women in the skill up program. And then when they launch to those mid career levels, be able to lift up and bring women up with them through the same program. Was there like a moment? Was there like an actual moment where you're like, okay, I need to start this? Uh, it, funny, it, it churned in my brain. 
on an airplane flight uh, out to California that I was going to for vacation. And I was just thinking more and more about it. And, you know, it was just, my husband said, you got to start this. And um, his encouragement for sure was very valued. And uh, the other thing that was a moment was he had gotten something from the SBA about a uh, innovate her challenge. And I had been mulling this in my mind and knowing me, I'd written like a 50 page business plan already for this. And um, he uh, presented that to me and I got in touch with the Connecticut branch of the SBA that was running this innovate her challenge. And the innovate her challenge was presented as, you know, we're looking for innovative products and services that support the 30 million women that are juggling and managing um, caregiving and and their professional careers. And really it's the 60 million men and women that are juggling this, that need innovative solutions. And I look at it not only as a women problem, but a family problem. I mean, men and women alike benefit from that. And um, they actually said, I started this as a nonprofit. And when I went to them, the Women's Business Center, Melena had said, well, you can't apply unless you're a for-profit business. So she's the one who shared kind of the reset and the social enterprise. And that's kind of what snowballed things. And we did, we were selected as a finalist for the Innovate Her Challenge. Awesome. Awesome. Now that you've um, gone through and expressed, you know, the history, I'm interested in hearing one, because it seems like there has been a shift um, due to our current situation. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to understand one, um, have you seen a shift in people um, being a little bit open with respect to bringing those women that are in transition back? And how do you see that in your success stories? Uh, definitely, there's been a shift, um, not I don't know if you meant with COVID-19, but in, there's been a major shift from 2015. I was pitching something that people didn't get. They're like, you know, we've had women that have been moms for years. What's different now? I'm like, number one, they're educated. Number two, they have experience. Um, and a lot of other things that go along with it. Um, but I think that the, the women movements, um, and I, I have a slide that kind of shows women solidarity, women supporting women, women being 51% in the workforce, it's no longer 98% male, 2% women, so we don't have to shift for that need. If there's 51% of them and every male, the other 49% often has a wife that's working, they need these shifts and these pivots. So uh, corporate America and um, the government has to start offering things that deliver for the next generation because really what those women that opted out did or are doing is they're cultivating our next generation. And um, yes, there are support systems, daycare centers, et cetera, that are also cultivating that next generation, but that doesn't mean that being a primary parent shouldn't be a respected role that you could pursue for the years that's needed. So I think that support is um, if, you know, when we're presenting it to potential clients, now all of them have a diversity director. Now there's trends for in a return to work movement. Not all, but many have, you know, that at least it's on their mindset. And many have been um, thinking of following the, the uh, banking industry that had their own captive return to work movements. So what in parallel, what we've done is offering kind of the return to work movements, community of support, and an opportunity to reach this talent that you would not otherwise see. They're not going to apply on your job board. You won't see them, but you can reach them through this um, social enterprise that prepares them, vets them, and gets them ready for you. So companies have really um, supported us, uh, sponsored us, and taken advantage of it and, and kind of launched their, you know, like put the momentum behind it to bring us to market. That's fantastic. So I'd like to ask, as an economist, <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you see the future of untapped potential? 
Um, really, uh, as an economist, if we look at the future for untapped potential, we've already added significant significant value both to the candidates in their return on their investment of their career, their education. If you figure it's amortized over uh, eight to 15 years and then zero for the remaining of their career work life, you know, instead by getting in them at an appealing right level, they're able to add uh, 20 more years. And we, we calculate that out to be at least $500,000 and um, the value that they're providing to uh, the economic engine of our country in corporate America, whether it is corporate America, startups, nonprofits, our candidates, fold into all different aspects with their skill sets. And um, also that dovetails into benefiting the GDP and uh, each dollar, you know, that they're adding value to, they're adding 1.4 X that for the economy. So um, we see that growth and what we've done in Hartford with uh, over 60 candidates launched, over 200 women served. Um, we really see uh, wanting to multiply that in multiple cities. And uh, one interesting thing that we're committed to is we use our own demographic that we're trying to serve um, as the engine of untapped potential. So those that work for and deliver for untapped potential are, you know, recent opt-outers, women in the work. In the, in the home that we want to pull out at the level that works for them now, the flexibility they need, and let them add value to untapped potential and lift up other women. Candace, so if you had a message for people that are, that would be your clients, whether they're the individuals or the companies on the other side, or somebody wanting to contribute to this space to help in that in that mission of getting these people, these women back into the workforce, um, what would you say to them? If you could speak to them right now, what is that, what is that message about that innovation and creative thinking of, around this niche, this market that you want to get across to people? Uh, really for the individuals, it would be, you know, check us out and engage in the network, whether you're planning to stay home for the next six months or the next year or the next three years, start to get the professional jargon back in your vernacular, start to um, meet people that you can network with that can help lift you up, even if it's not your time now. So my, my thought is the earlier you engage, the better you impact your own visualization of your future success. And when you can visualize it, then it will happen. And you start to get that positive feedback of seeing the others do it and seeing um, the mentors that are there to support you. Um, and to the corporations, we really um, give you, give, you know, low risk access to high caliber candidates. Even given COVID-19 and 30 million people being laid off, I still feel we have the most responsible, high value candidates that you won't see applying yet you could meet with them. And if you have an open mind of how this candidate can apply to a business need that I have, not a wreck with check in the box of can they do X, Y, Z program today now, but can they deliver to my business? Are they the culture fit? Are they the ambition that I want? and dispel the myth that women that opted out to raise their kids are not ambitious. Those women that opted out many, I mean, people make all different choices, but some make it because it's economically more feasible for them to not pay for three kids in daycare and to serve their family's needs. And others do it because um, they have um, this um, thoroughbred mentality where they have to deliver success for their corporate corporation and success for their family and they see themselves failing and it's not good enough for them. They're so ambitious that they have to cut the ties because they're tired. They, they feel un, unfulfilling both wickets. So they yeah. focus on one to be successful. And when they come back, they're going to give 110% to that corporate mission. Yeah. And I've been lucky enough to, to volunteer at one of your events. So I can vouch for that fact that there are so many there were so many women from so many different experiences, backgrounds, knowledge, education. It was such a, a, a varied pool of candidates of 
of just, like you said, that human capital. So I think the work that you're doing, especially in, because it is our community in the Hartford community for now, I think yeah. it's amazing. So I thank you so much for that. Great, I appreciate it. And as always, thank you for sharing your story and your information with us, Candace. Um, absolutely love your mission and vision. And you know, if there's any way that we can support you, we certainly will. I appreciate it, thanks. And um, really, I think uh, that uh, raising the awareness of there's this opportunity to support women in this way is a great thing because mm -hmm. every connection in industry is valuable to us. Perfect. So that's it for this episode of the Connecticut Creative Collaborative. If you have, if you've enjoyed this story, if you have anybody in your network who you think is a creative, again, not just the traditional creatives, the authors, the painters, the sculptors, but anybody with that creative, that innovative mind, that motivated mind to get out there and build their community, build their networks up and kind of shift things around. Please let us know. You'll see our information when we post these uh, ways to get in touch with us. Candice, again, thank you so much. Marianne, again, thank you so much. Um, and we'll see you in the next episode.